Hey, it's Rachel. So I've been getting heaps of questions lately around stress and anxiety, and it's not really surprising because we are over a year into a worldwide pandemic. I mean, if you're not anxious, then there might be something wrong with you. <laughs> Jokes. Um, but seriously, I think we're all feeling a little bit under the pump. Um, we're all feeling a little bit fe fearful about the future. So I thought I'd put together a few little um, bits and pieces that might be able to help at least one person um, identify their stress um, and give them a few tools to be able to just calm the fuck down. So stress is a really age old response. So way back in the day when you were, um, you know, hunting or foraging or whatever, and you came into contact with say a dinosaur. I know we didn't live at the same time, but it's just so much cooler than a saber tooth tiger. So a big like fuck off T-Rex or something. Um, so your body would be like, oh shit, there's a T-Rex. And it would, immediately um, respond in a certain way and what it, how it responds is it increases um, your heart rate and heart um, the the force of your um, of your heart um, the pressure sorry um, and so what that helps to do is it helps to send more blood to your brain so you can think about what you're going to do and to your muscles so you have more blood pumping and you can run faster and, and be stronger. Um, it also frees up glucose from your liver as well so you've got more glucose floating around so you're more able to um, feed the cell, feed your muscle cells and you know make more energy, more chemical energy. Um, because you are just so focused on this T-Rex your body is so focused on getting away from this T-Rex and on survival because that's what the stress response is all about. Um, it kind of shuts down some things that you don't really need. So it shuts down things like digestion. It shuts down things like um, reproduction and immunity as well. So when you're in that stress response, all of those things kind of go by the wayside because you don't need them when you're being chased by a T-Rex, you know? Now, the interesting thing is that that response is the same whether you're running from a T-Rex or whether you're just um, worried about the future or worried about, you know, what this pandemic holds. And stress was only ever supposed to be like a, I'm stressed, uh, I'm going to run away and then I'm going to use up all those hormones and stuff and then I'm going to be calm again. But whereas now we're like, I'm stressed about this. Oh, oh, I'm stressed about that and it's just totally ongoing and so what happens when it's ongoing is you're always turning off those reproductive hormones you're always turning off that your digestion and you're turning off your um, immunity so you know that can lead to uh, a few different issues you know like reproductive problems digestive problems immune problems um, and also you're always turning on your um, cardiovascular system, so high blood pressure, um, you know, anxiety, because you've got all this blood rushing to your brain as well. So you're like always thinking, always thinking, always thinking. So that can really be really detrimental to your long-term health. So what can you do to shut down your stress response? Hmm, it's a little bit trickier than that. I think I put together a few things because I'm kind of like, you know, it's not just take a pill, sorry guys, um, and be chill. It's not like that. You need to have lots of different kind of tools in your toolbox in order to kind of like reduce stress. So I think one of the biggest ones is find some time just for you, you know, forget, I know it sounds so lame, but like get a hobby, you know, like I went and did a pottery class because I was kind of like, hmm. You know, I need to have some time just for me, different people, out of the house, all that kind of stuff. That can really help to mitigate stress response. It really can because you're doing something that's just for you. And oftentimes doing things that maybe is quite focused. Um, so, you know, like cross stitch. I know these sounds like old people things, but, you know, I am an old person, so I can say this. Um, those types of things are quite good because they're kind of mindless and they get you out of that stress response. You're not thinking about that because you're thinking um, intently about something else. Hmm. So I, I like things like that. Hobbies. Get a hobby. Um, sleep can be really disrupted by stress as well. Um, I'm not going to give you like my 10 point plan. 
um, because there are some amazing books out there and the one that I always recommend is called Why We Sleep and it's by Matthew Walker and he goes through why sleep is so important and he gives you some really interesting um, ideas around what you should be doing to make your stress, make your sleep better. Um, you can also just Google those and they'll all come up and sometimes there might be one or two that you're like, oh, I should do that and it might work for you. So. Um, reduce tea and coffee and alcohol because people get stuck in this merry-go-round. They have coffee in the morning to wake up, which also kind of, you know, makes your body secrete those hormones as well because it's a stimulant. So you're kind of like adding to your stress response chemically. And then they're so G'd up at the end of the day that they have to have a drink in order to um, calm down. And that's just the total merry-go-round. And also know that alcohol really affects your sleep as well. You're not sleeping well. It messes up your blood sugar as well, depending on what you're drinking. So you can be, um, it's one of the key reasons why people might go to sleep and then they'll wake up in the middle of the night and not be able to get back to sleep because they're having these blood sugar irregularities from the alcohol. Exercise, people. When you've got those hormones circulating, um, you need to get rid of them. Um, and back in the day when you were chased by that T-Rex, you would be running away from them and you're using up all those hormones and you're getting them out. So, you know, even if it's just a daily walk, um, you know, like a brisk walk um, or aerobic exercise. Aerobic exercise is probably better, but you know, for old people like me, um, my daily walk is it. <laughs> um, choose what you're giving a fuck about. You know, like, uh, you know, do you, do you really care about, you know, what that person is saying on Instagram? Um, you know, just flip past. Don't, every time you get like that little annoyance, you're just adding to your stress load. So, you know, don't like, you know, oh, that person's so annoying. It's just not worth it, people. It's just not worth it. So choose very carefully what you give a fuck about. Um, put down your bloody phone as well. Here I am talking to my phone. Um, but put down your phone. There is research to show that it increases your cortisol levels, which is one of those stress hormones. Um, and it probably in response to you getting annoyed at someone on the internet or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but, you know, maybe just have a little period during the day when you look at your phone and the rest of the day, just put it away. Put it away. Eat real food. I mean, that's just a basic. And you can get information everywhere about what constitutes real food. Basically minimizing your sugar intake is really important because when you're under stress you've already got that kind of like elevated levels of sugar kind of circulating because you're ready for this kind of you're ready to make more chem chemical energy so I'd be looking at minimizing the sugar that you're eating that's really important so that's kind of like refined carbohydrates all that kind of shit I mean you know it's readily available. Um, and then adaptogens. So adaptogens are herbs which help to um, mitigate the ill effects of stress. They're non-toxic, they're able to be used over extended periods of time, um, and they are shown to reduce cortisol levels, so that's one of those stress hormones. Um, people do really find that they have a, quite a profound effect um, especially on things like stress levels and just calming and things like that. So my favorite is probably ashwagandha and it's a bit of a trendy herb at the moment. It used to be called withania and now it's suddenly called ashwagandha, um, which is interesting. Um, but it is a slight sedative, so it has a very slight sedative action. Um, it is a, an adaptogen, it's an immune modulator, which you'll find most of the adaptogens are, and I usually recommend this one for people that are tired but wired, so people who are bloody exhausted but they can't get to sleep, that's a, a big like thing for ashwagandha, um, and people who have thyroid dysfunction too, which can be um, you know, exacerbated by stress too, because it just buggers up your whole HPA axis, axis which is probably a little bit more complex than we want to talk about here. Um, so that's a, a, probably my number one would be ashwagandha. Um, number two would be reishi, and um, that's an adaptogen once again. So it helps to mitigate the ill effects of stress, and it has quite a profound calming action. So I put it in my um, moon formula, which is a sleep formula, uh, which 
it, you know, and it really does calm the farm. Um, so that's a good one to have. And sometimes people add it to their coffee in the morning. It just kind of reduces the, the, the stress effect of coffee. But I've just told you not to drink coffee. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, and it has a liver function action too. It helps with digestion, which can be a little bit under par, specifically more constipation um, when you're under stress. Um, reishi for constipation is what I'm saying. Um, and then immunity as well. So as with all of those uh, medicinal mushrooms, including cordyceps, um, which is another one of the adaptogenic um, mushrooms, they all will have an, an immune modulating action, which is really valuable, especially right now as we're heading into winter. Um, and of course, um, you know, when we're all worried about pandemic stuff. Um, yeah, so definitely helpful for just supporting your healthy function of the immune system. So cordyceps is another one that I would probably recommend. Um, and it has a, um, it's helpful for people who maybe are suffering with reproductive issues alongside um, their stress. I think stress affects people in all different ways. So, you know, ashwagandha is kind of like the key one, kind of helps with everything. Um, reishi, you know, people who get that constipation, but are, you know, and sleeplessness as well, um, associated with um, stress. Cordyceps, people who are really fatigued and um, they tend to have a weak spot in their lungs, so when they get a cold or something, it goes to their lungs. Um, I'd be looking at cordyceps, really potent adaptogen, um, and also has an action for reproductive health too. As does Shadavari. Now Shadavari, some people say it's an adaptogen, some people say it's not. Um, I really love Shadavari. It's in our lover's potion. It's, it's probably one of my favorite herbs. Um, it has that adaptogen-like action, so it helps to mitigate the ill effects of stress. Um, but it also has a moistening action on um, the tissues, so it's good for maybe women that are going into perimenopause as well, which can be exacerbated by stress as well, and cause anxiety. So, you know. Um, and then holy basil too. Now, you know, I had an amazing holy basil um, harvest this year. It was just, I couldn't I couldn't keep up with it. Um, so it's really easy to grow this herb. Um, and it's a beautiful herb, and it has a very nice calming action. It, it blends really nicely with things like rose and reishi and those types of herbs together. They're like just really calming for the, the whole being. So, there you go. Oh, 12 minutes. Jeez, no one's going to listen to this. <laughs> um, so that's my kind of, you know, my wrap-up of stress. Um, yeah, I mean, there's other herbs out there that are more sedative type herbs, which may be helpful if you're really, you know, G'd up and really in the throes of anxiety. So, you know, you can get little um, tinctures of, of herbs, which are good for um, if you are, you know, having anxiety, you know, on a daily basis and it's kind of panicky. Herbs like kava and passion flower and lavender. Um, those types of herbs, skullcap as well, can be really helpful in that instance. Um, yeah, but also the big thing as well is that if anxiety and stress are really um, getting to you, then it's probably good to talk to someone, talk to a friend first, and then maybe, you know, talk to a professional um, if it's really impacting on your life because you don't get a medal <laughs> for putting up with feeling anxious. So, um, yeah, seek help.